Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Tim. First of all, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome to testdemi.com's YouTube page where we share practical real world applications and information to kind of get you going on your journey to be a test automation engineer. So let's get it. Like I said, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being here. If you subscribe, well done, yo. <laughs> and if you haven't, yeah, yo, don't forget, man, hit that subscribe button. Be a part of the movement. Like we mentioned, we're trying to get about 10,000 automation, uh, excuse me, manual testers into automation or perhaps developers that are trying to get an automation. Um, I've released some videos on uh, the job market and how crazy it is that the demand for the need for test automation developers, engineer, is greater than the actual supply of them. So we're trying to get more people in the door, man, make some more money, be more in demand. And you can just kind of morph out of that manual, you know, manual testing role and, you know, begin to, you know, garner and, you know, get new skills under your belt to be more marketable and employable. You know, perhaps start your own business, all right? Anyway, second of all, I want to say, yo, happy new month to everybody, yo. I'm hoping everybody has a great month of August. I'm hoping July was good, but if it wasn't, yo, I'm hoping your August is greater. Well, you know what I mean? First things first, just had to say that because, yo, this is our first video for the month of August. So I want to wish everybody well. Have a great month. Stay focused on your goals because we're going to make it happen. So let's get into today's video. Yo, let's get it. All right. So for today, right, I was sitting back and thinking, right, I was like, people are looking for jobs and for test automation. You know, they're working on the skills they need, working hard. But my thing is like one of the most defeating things I feel is, you know, you're working hard to learn, for example, programming language, right? And if you haven't watched our uh, previous videos on what um, program la programming language you should actually learn to get started in automation, go back, check out some of the archives. I have a few videos. I think I have one, uh, yeah, a few videos on there that talks about that, what tools to use, what, uh, what programming language to get started on. Um, you know, that's all good if you get started with the programming language, the uh, uh, Selenium, for example, the right automation tool. But my thing is, yo, so you're learning this, you're working hard, you're learning code, you learn how to automate web applications, websites, and things of that nature. But what happens when you learn all that and you go to a job interview and you kind of learn, you come, you come to find out like, wow, I actually need some more skills that these companies are looking for, right? I, I, I kind of I liken this to like cooking, right? So you know how to cook a main dish that's in hot demand, but a lot of times when you're cooking, there are a lot of utensils and tools that are needed to actually make that meal holistic, right? Same thing with uh, automation testers. So my thing is for today, I want to talk about three tools, three other tools, I should say, that you need to know, that I need to know, that we all need to know to really be proficient, to be great, and to be excellent in test automation, right? So we talk about, yeah, right, learn a programming language. That is awesome because programming, like we mentioned, is the foundation of test automation. Yes, that's great. Learn a web automation tool like Selenium WebDriver uh, or, or another web application tool to learn automation. These are all great. It's going to help you. But my thing is that's just a starting point. There's so much more to learn. And that's what I want to kind of talk about today. All right. So let's get into it. So what's the first tool you want to learn? The first tool you want to learn is SQL and or PL SQL, right? SQL, which stands for the, you guys didn't know a part of me, but for those that don't know it, just want to break it down because we want to bring things down to um, a level where we're all, you know, speaking the same language. SQL pretty much is the structured query language. It's the um, language that's used to kind of query databases to actually extract data or to manipulate data based on whatever um, project or program you're working on. Uh, so you have SQL and you also have PL SQL, which stands for procedural language. Uh, structural query language is just an extension of SQL where you can do a lot more things that you can't actually do in uh, SQL and they're both developed by Oracle right so that's important you know because a lot of things is um, a lot of times we're looking for jobs a lot of companies especially if you're looking for automation developer roles like I mentioned if you're looking for like an automation developer role or looking to get into automation testing they're going to be looking at you as a developer. You want to look at yourself as a developer. So there's certain tools they're going to expect you to already kind of know because you don't want to get into the job or you don't want to go to interview and ask you a basic SQL question. And you're like, yo, what is SQL? Or you don't really know too much about it. And I don't want you to get caught up in a trap because a lot of people do. They get in and they get slapped right in the face like, wow, I didn't know I had to actually, in addition to know Python or C Sharp or Java, also know these other skills. So SQL, right, the structured query language, some basic things you want to know. Uh, you want to know how to write the basic constructs like uh, basic select statements to select data from the uh, actual uh, Oracle database to uh, uh, mention select data to update data in the database to uh, 
uh, delete data, to insert data. You want to also know about basic joints, how to write inner and outer joint statements. You also want to know about um, uh, truncating data, deleting data, like I mentioned. Uh, you also want to know uh, about, like I said, executing PL SQL blocks and being able to write stored procedure. Not only write stored procedures, uh, execute them, but also be able to read the code for PL SQL to, in order to be able to manip manipulate their data if you know if you need to do so. So PL SQL and SQL is one of the first skills I say you want to want you have to know because a lot of times when you go into these jobs interview, like I mentioned, they just kind of expect you to kind of know, you know, for example, you look at like something like ice hockey, right, or hockey. Um, yeah, you have a skill, maybe, for example, you're, you're playing one of the positions in ho uh, hockey. And again, I don't know the, uh, uh, too much about hockey, but I just like this uh, example because with hockey, some things are basics, like ice skating. If you're an, a, a professional hockey player, they kind of expect you already know how to ice skate. That should be like a no-brainer. And it's the same thing with PL SQL and SQL. Some things, like you're coming into a job as a developer or automation developer, some things are basic. They're like, yeah, they expect you to kind of already know SQL, right? So my thing is you don't want to get caught slipping. Learn SQL, learn SQL, learn PL SQL, know about the construct I mentioned, insert, delete, uh, update, select, uh, know about store procedures, joins, inner and outer joins. Get get your basics up today. Be sharp on that. Be good on it. Uh, so you can you know do great when you get in the door. So PL SQL SQL is number one. The second skill I want to mention that you want to know everyone is when it comes to version control, source control tools. Right. This is critical, right? Because a lot of times when you're doing uh, you're working as an automation developer. You're not working like a solo uh, uh, engineer in silos. Yes, you might be, but you're still going to be working part of a larger team, maybe with other automation developers or the testers are going to be accessing your code. And a lot of times when you're talking about source control, there has to be a way to manage the data, right? So if you make changes in your code and you want to actually now uh, share the code with other developers on the larger project, there has to be a way of tracking the changes in the data. And besides tracking the change of the data, a lot of companies, when it comes to um, um, auditing reasons, you, be, you have to be able to be able to track that data in case the organization or company ever gets audited at any particular time. So, so knowing source control tools and version control tools, not only knowing about them, but how to use them is critical for your career as an automation developer. Uh, one example I'm going to give you is, or actually two, is Git. In addition with GitHub, you know, know how to use Git from the command line, not necessarily from the uh, web, because as a developer, they're going to expect you to know this, right? As a nation developer, know how to use Git, know how to actually push data to the uh, central repository, know how to pull data from the central repository, uh, know how to use GitHub, know how to use Git, the command line. Be familiar with Git. Another uh, uh, version control tool that's very popular out there that you might want to be familiar with is SVN. Some people call it Subversion. Be familiar with Subversion, Git. Uh, also, GitHub, I mean, I believe if you do that, you cannot actually go wrong. And the final tool I want to mention, uh, I want you guys to be familiar with when you want to get, get going on automation uh, journey here. It's going to sound basic, but I think it's pretty cool. You have to know it is Unix, right? Yes, Unix, right? Not only Unix, but specifically the actual Bash shell script, the Bash, excuse me, Bash shell, right? Know how to use the Bash. I remember one time I went to an interview. And they asked me, are you familiar with Unix? I'm like, yeah. And the question came out, the next question the manager asked, asked me, okay, which shell are you familiar with? And thank goodness I had experience with that. I was on top of game. I knew uh, what I, I was getting into. And I was oh, yeah, Bash. And, you know, because Bash is a very popular um, shell when it comes to Unix. There are a variety of other shells, um, K shell, other shells like that out there. Uh, but, um, but the main things you want to be very familiar with, with the bash uh, command line or the bash shell and how to run Unix command uh, line scripts, right? So what I want to do is, um, if you're not familiar with bash and you have Windows 10, um, there's actually uh, an update that comes to Windows 10 that you can actually use and actually access bash, the bash command line, uh, Unix, yes, that actually from Windows. So I'm going to do a quick walkthrough for everyone. And if you're not familiar with this, um, Go ahead and follow me. Again, if it's Windows 10, hopefully you have the latest updates on Windows 10. And if you have this follow along, I'll show you how to get Bash on your actual uh, Windows uh, operating system so you can actually run Bash from the Windows operating system. So let's get started, shall we? Let's go. All right, so what you want to do here is if you uh, right click here on your Windows prompt, right, uh, go to settings. Under settings, you want to do. Um, Updated security, and I've already kind of done this, but you guys can follow along. And under updates and securities, um, 
you want to click where it says for developers and under developers uh, yours should, probably should have been in side load apps or Windows Store apps but I want you to come down and click where it says uh, developer mode put it in developer mode it's gonna take a, a few moments to initialize once it's done you don't have to save you can just exit out it automatically saves it and now once, you, once you're done with that come to the search part of Windows 10 and just type in a uh, control panel right bring up a control panel go to programs um, under programs go to where it says turn windows features on or off right and under there you're gonna see the option uh, mine might not be on here but because I've already done it uh, when you come under here there's gonna be the option where you can actually right right actually it's right here sorry minus here. you're gonna see where it says Windows subsystem for Linux is just the beta version right it's not the full version and that's important to know because maybe not all the um, Unix programs might work or all the commands might not necessarily work but at least it's the beta version you're gonna get most of them working uh, to get you uh, up and running right so just click that click OK I've already done this and once you're done it's good once you click OK it's gonna actually if you wanna reboot your system now or later if you have time go to reboot it now but basically once you're done with the reboot I've already done this so uh, what you wanna do is come into again to your search under Windows 10 and just type in bash and as you can see here you can go ahead and run the bash command bring that up and now let's go ahead and get started so let's uh, do this here um, just so you guys follow along right so just type in Y because now you can see it's the best feature it says this will install Ubuntu on Windows um, onto your local environment uh, for Windows here type yes it's actually going to load it so as it's going here I'm just going to pause this as it's going through the download and we're going to come back and continue the video so see you guys see you. Hey, what's up, everyone? So we're back. Uh, welcome back, guys. Um, so what it wants us to do next, uh, the download is complete. Uh, it actually took a few moments to, uh, in addition to extract all the uh, files that are needed, as you can see here. It said extracting files. System. It took a few moments. So we're back. We're back in business, ready to go, 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 go. All right. So what you want to do here is now you want to create a username, right? A Unix username. So just come here, um, create a username. I'm going to create one, you know, what I want to do here. And uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to create a username. I'm going to create a password, so I'm going to have to pause it. We'll be back soon. Hey, I know it might be um, encoded, but hey, you never know people these days, man. Kind of crazy, crazy, crazy out there. So hold on. I'll be back. Peace in a moment. All right, so we're back. Have my password in. Hope you have yours. So as you can see, I put in my username, put in the password. As you can see here, it's showing, um, it says installation is successful, password is successful. Uh, username is good to go and it talks about how you can run a command that is administrator just kind of like um, Windows but in Unix it's a uh, root use the sudo command you can use the get app command also to begin to pull apps and everything you need but you can see I'm in you can see my username here uh, desktop version and you can see the uh, dollar sign the prompt that shows you I'm in the bash shell prompt good to go so we can just type in for example ls and what it does is it should list all our files you can see that um, you can see all the files that are there it just shows you it's listed uh, not, long, not sure how long it could take. I can kill this, but uh, it's pretty much done. You can run that ls command. Uh, we can do uh, pwd, which is the uh, uh, present working directory. And you can see shows, shows me where I am. I mean, my Windows uh, System 32. Um, I can actually, let's see here. We can, uh, let's see. Let's do a command. Uh, let's do, da -da, let's do a change directory. Let's change directory to uh let's see can we go to desktop no 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 we can't let's just go back to the root here let's do present working directory see where we are we're at the root so we should be able to do an ls uh ltra so we can see all the versions uh the latest uh do, 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 do. let's see here um uh let's see let's go to can we can we go to desktop from here let's see nope maybe from home yep Yep, let's see. Present working directory, home. Uh, let's do ls. Okay, yeah, let's go into my directory there. Uh, I don't know, nothing might be in there, but anyway. Yeah, we don't have anything there. So, anyway, um, I don't want to waste anyone's, I don't want to waste any more time, but the bottom line is I wanted to show you that um, you can actually use Unix, excuse me, bash, the bash shell, uh, and the bash, com bash command line from within the Windows OS. It's a new thing that's uh, part of Windows 10, so you can kind of get going work on your bash command line skills 
So as you continue the journey to be an automation developer, you have all the tools you need to be great. All right. So we talked about three tools needed. One was SQL, SQL, PL, SQL. Second one was version control. We talked about Git, GitHub, and also SVN or Subversion. And third, using the Bash command line and also Unix. And, you know, if you get these skills up, you know, harness these skills, walk on them, you know, work, on, work on them, I'm sure you're going to be great. So till next time, if you haven't, don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Check out testdemi.com. That's T E S T demi.com. Subscribe. We have some new free tutorial videos on there. Check it out. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.